call the meeting to order. And first we have the payday. Okay. Uh, yes, this, I think we have a bad connector, so we will not have it on the screen. Okay. But I do have the, um, the grand total payday, even though I don't have your sales tax numbers for you right now, the payday numbers are 956-918-63. As I read this, unless I'm overlooking something, that I'll be the only one going for training this year to Kansas, uh, to well, the well, Kansas you, Association. Well, I don't know yet. Um, we we do have you registered right now, but mm -hmm. I haven't heard back from you. Are you going to go for just one day? So, okay. I just seen that one on here, and that's coming up pretty fast. Okay. questions in here about certain things, but I suppose probably I would need to wait and talk to the department head when they come up at the next meeting or something, like the walk and stuff that was purchased and some advertising and, and different things. I do have some questions on that, um, so I doubt that I should probably just wait and talk to the department head on it. Okay. Do we ever use KSAL? Uh, it works for advertising jobs. KSAL. I don't know. Uh, I'm not that's the line of station. Oh. I mean, that, has a, that has an awesome uh, website for jobs and stuff like that. I know they gave us a presentation here not too awful long ago. And, and the radio way, station now? The representative of that uh, advertising and so on did. Okay. And uh, so, and then the same way with like Indeed or some of those more larger um, advertising agencies, do we ever use them at all? I never see them. We yeah. use um, HRE Partners as an online link. Um, we have not used Indeed. I think we tried it once, and it's kind of a lengthy process to get through all those questions on that. Um, we did recently try to branch out a little bit more on some of the advertising, on some of the positions that we've been having trouble filling, um, and that was through... Um, gosh, 
I think somebody, the newspaper in Heston, reached out to us on that, and they had some some places where they could advertise that, and so that, we did that. Um, for certain positions, um, for instance, like a department head position, we go to the listservs for those organizations that um, would have those sorts of people looking at their at their websites. But no, we've never done any radio advertising or. Um, oh well, no, this it's a it's a link on the internet, but it's KSAL. It's just a lineup. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. I just I just had one, but it might be for Jesse. I don't know, or we can relay it. Uh, uh, I noticed uh, uh, we had an Everts Inc. do quite a bit of trucking. I don't know if that is that's a contract or per load or how that thing. Uh, that I, Everett is they haul out a ham quarry. That's the ones who when he buys rock from ham or woodbine, they use Everett. Yeah. Truck. Well. I just, I just wondered if we contracted with them for so many loads, if we're paying them per load, because <coughs> there are several different billings. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed, and that too was my question too, because we're still buying a lot from Harshman. Um, and I don't know. It just gives you the this says Harshman. So I don't know who's trucking it. Well, we also bought some from Bird Camp too. I see three loads. Yes, or three. Instances. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I don't know, associated materials and supply, those are some of the questions that I had too. Okay. So that's why I said I would just wait to talk to Jesse on that. And I'm glad to see that they are buying some rock out of Ham Quarry. Be happy to come to Northern Park and come. I saw a question that I have, and I guess I'll just hold off and wait and talk to him. I think just ask yeah, questions on that. Okay. So on that. Um, Diane, I got just one question. You guys getting ready to approve those bills that you're paying there? Pretty soon, yes. And you have questions about them? I question you paying them when you have questions about them. Well, the question that I have is not necessarily the amount. I'm just questioning how he is determining where he's putting the rock and why we aren't spending more at others. I mean, I pretty much know, I have all the documents and stuff as to what we're paying from each one of these quarries. And if he bought this much, we've had quite a bit of discussion about the quality of rock from one quarry to the other. Okay. And so my, my question to him is, why are we still buying rock from known quarries that have soft rock? Unless there's, you know, I know there's some places for that. Maybe that's the answer, I don't know. But not not necessarily what we're paying for. Paying for the rock is not my question. I don't know if that was your question. Well, my question my, my question is like like I said, it's not it's not the amount whether we were contracted for so many loads or if we're paying per load. I doubt that we're contracted. I mean, that's normal. Well, I, I don't know because it's, does, it's quite I'm, it's quite a, quite a chunk of money. Like, it's, yeah, I would think you'd want to let a contract to uh, for the hauling. If you're going to haul continually from that far away, you're not going to send <coughs> no. tandem axle trucks up there to haul. It'd be advantageous to you to let out a contract for uh, trucking yeah, that, companies to haul. That, that was my question. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's about 17 miles away. Yeah. As far as that is, but when we buy from Harshman, that's even further because he gets a lot of that rock out of Waverly, and so that's almost 80 miles away. Yeah. So that trucking there would be the one to really question, but I don't see trucking on that. It just says Harshman. So I don't know if this um, includes the trucking. Well, I imagine we, we do it, but for us to say, and I've questioned that for a long time, about how far we're going with Harshman and then the quality of the rock. So that's why I was going to question it again. Why would you buying so much? Because that's who we bought the most from, for two thousand. $408 worth of rock from Parchment. Well, because we it's close. We don't know. You got so much rock to haul, because I haven't seen a rock truck in my area of the county since you guys started talking roads. So, 
I hear that all the time. Yeah, I, know. I don't know where no, it's going. They're not getting any better. So. Yep. But we're spending. Um, well, we spent thirty-four thousand from with Everett from Ham Quarry, and then we spent nine thousand from Burke Camp, and forty-two thousand four hundred dollars from Harshman. So I mean, we're up to eighty, ninety thousand dollars just in this last month. Last month we spent about the same. Now last I month guess I need to drive a different area of the county because I'm sure not seeing it. So. Well, you find it. So. But it is something that I want to. Clarify okay. exactly what we're buying. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's fine. Okay, so is there any other questions on this? Is Jesse down in his office or is he out? I don't think he's here today. He's on vacation till Tuesday. Oh, Wednesday. is that right? Yep. Okay. That's what his voicemail says, anyway. Okay. That answers that. Okay, so. You said you had no questions. You said you're done. No problem. And the sales tax um, collected was sixty nine thousand one fifty five twelve. Would you like to move on to administrative? Are we done with table? If yeah. I mean, if we're done with table, okay. then let's move on, yes. All right. I have the minutes of December 17th and the minutes of December 20th. So do I have a motion to accept the minutes of December 17th? As written. I'll make a motion. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Motion by Randy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kent. All in favor say aye. 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 And then the minutes of December 20th. I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to accept the December 20th. Motion by Kent. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Randy. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. So this one has all the, the actual districts, the way we divide them up, um, and that will be certified today, am I correct? That you'll do your, your adopt your resolution today, yes. And then when does that go into the governor's office today yet, or no, mm -hmm. is that going to be in there? Because I thought they have to approve and then set the date for the election. They um, set the date for the election, and um, we can try to get it in there today. I doubt that they're making okay. action today. But. Well, I was just asking, not that I was requesting mm -hmm. that you do that. Yeah. Okay. Depends on how long you take with your meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I doubt it, too. <laughs> okay, where does our request to vote on us, the election go to then? So that discussion takes place with the governor's office, yeah. and then they will either declare according to what you all agreed, or right. you they will make a different declaration. Yeah. So, have you had any phone calls on it? Yeah. I just I just wondered uh, how do we present it to them? Though does it all go the minutes of the meeting goes to that with it? Presentation. Well, I have never done this before, I, I, so I don't that. really know. Yeah, that's fine. Usually, mm -hmm. we go ahead and utilize those because they encapsulate what the uh, understanding is and what's been passed by the commission. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of phone calls with people that are not happy with the November, mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if we can revisit that or if we should or what. Because I understand that the process will be the same whether it's November or whether it's March. Yeah, it will right. be appointment. Um, I called Janice again, uh, in another words, and she was explaining different things to me, and she already got her certification back for her election March the 26th, mm -hmm. and um, gave some very good reasons why they're not waiting until November. And then with the phone calls that I've had with people saying, you know, we voted for it, what's the delay? Um, I know I personally like to revisit it for that reason. Because what is what is the good reason for delay? I mean, the small cost that's involved is that, I don't know if that's justification for the delay. Oh, I think it is, because that's the phone calls that I've had, is they, they say, pretty smart, by uh, counties waited this long, they don't think we need a special election, spend ten to $15,000 to move ahead. Well, that's not the phone call that I've been receiving. I've been receiving phone calls saying, why wait? What's going to make the difference in November? Um, and so I don't know. And I don't know. I know there's controversy on this, but when I spoke to Jay Hall at Kansas Association County, he felt as though that was too long to wait because we would probably have two districts unrepresented because we're going to approve the districts. And so they'll be unrepresented. They really wouldn't be because the way it's written, they, once the two new um, county commissioners are seated, then it, the division in terms of that representation actually occurs, so that would be the, at the point of election, whether you did it as a special in March or whether you did it as a regular in November. Until then, you're basically the three that continue to represent as you currently have. We've approved the, the switch to the five, but the actual implementation of that representation won't occur until the other two are seated, because you've disenfranchised a bunch of voters that way. Mm -hmm. So we wait a whole year. Oh, you yeah, wait a few months. Well, it's a whole year. No, it isn't. Until November. If the election was in March or April, why then you only wait three or four months till November? Well, well I guess a year. If, you, a if, year. You, this, if you look at it like that, you wait till March or April, and then November after that is. But if you look at it from today, it's a whole year. Yes, ma'am. I am Seeger, I'm yes, Chair of Marion County Democrats, and I just want to make one comment that we are in a push, both parties, within 25 days of mm -hmm. the governor's action to mm -hmm. each find two candidates yes. 
by uh, our party's action, which would then go on a ballot uh, either March or uh, November. Now, we're going to push to find people, obviously, qualified people, but then they are going to have such a short time to come alive and to, you know, work on this, I mean, less than two months. And I don't, I, I just think maybe they might do better with more time, but, um, it, you know, it just seems like it's going to push them really fast. Maybe they can do it in two months and mm -hmm. campaign. And I guess the reason I even say that is because when I ran, I didn't even start my campaign until August because there were so many listed on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So I waited till August. Nobody even knew I was running until August. So I had August, September, and October. I had three months, and that's it. I mean, and, and if they, they, they would only have their district, I guess, mm -hmm. but, right. um, and I guess if they're going to go any door-to-door -door or any kind of, you know, campaigning, it might be bad weather. I guess you can never count on that, but anyway, I just think it might give them a very short window. I think Commissioner Becker discussed what his feelings was when he was elected and stuff like that. It was. Close, open the door, shut the door, and it was over. Yeah. And, and, and that, that was how quick it was. And so we want the people to know the people who's ever going to come on. I mean, I'm sorry you didn't run in a party. I think you run up, uh, independently. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you run as a party, why? Right. You, you campaign, you, you go out, and you do that, and it takes time to do that. So. And uh, we have the opportunity for independent on this as well. True. Yeah. True. So, yes, you, you want to say something, sir? Yeah. With these new districts that are coming up, the way I hear her saying it is they're going to be appointed yep. by the committee or the, they don't yeah, have they're, just they're an open thing where somebody appointed. can come in and run for it. Yeah. they got to be nominated by the party. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Brad's shaking his head, but yeah. <laughs> like, no. no. <laughs> I, I'm getting two different vibes. Okay. <laughs> so, so the... Each party, by law, is to nominate a candidate to be placed on the general ballot. So the parties will make a nomination of, uh, for each vacancy. So they will, uh, it basically, it's in lieu of having a primary election. Um, so the, okay. the, each nominee of each party that's placed on the general election ballot uh, the people will vote still. And then there will also be the opportunity for anybody who's unaffiliated to file my petition. And they have that same 25 days to do that that the parties have to hold and nominate their candidates for the ballot. And then the ballots would be printed then with the, no the nominees from each party for each position uh, listed, as well as the any unaffiliated candidates who have filed a proper petition um, to place their name on the ballot. And then they will also, there will also be a blank line. So right. anybody <coughs> could potentially run a write-in campaign also um, for the election. And that, you know, if someone in a party does not get a nomination and they wish to run, they could run by write-in. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So, so the party is not actually appointing yeah. the, the, the people. They yeah. are... Uh, they not are, like when Kent was appointed. No, it's no. different. It's right. a different process. Okay. okay? Right. So I get that. I would urge you to push it off till November just for the fact that, uh, you know, you said that there would be districts not represented. I'd hope you three would be smart enough to represent Well, he just said that, home. yeah, we I know, there. but you said there would be three, a few districts not represented. Right. The if two, you're not sitting yeah. there for the Marion County as a whole, you need to get up and wait. Mm -hmm. Period. So, well, that's my was, opinion. I was just telling him what okay. the attorney from Kansas Association of Counties had told me. And so, okay. that's why we have so many lawyers. So we can get a, they don't agree anymore. Anyway. I, I have talked to a couple of people that have shown interest in, in the one new district that's close to me, and, the, and they were very much in favor of having that additional time if they are the nominee, to be able to get out, visit people, kind of get to know, because, you know, the district's going to be different, so. Exactly. Yeah. So what did you want to say? I mean, does your party intend to, if I was a candidate from your party, at 
your you will have a meeting towards the end of the 25 days. Well, and sometime within the 25 within days. Within the 25 days, and any candidate will have to come to that meeting and give and will you allow them to speak and, and yes. go on and, and do yes. that. Yes, and then the precinct people are the ones that right. actually right. get to do the no, no. the yeah. voting on right. those candidates. Right. And those two that would be elected. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, two Democratic candidates yes. representing those two new districts, right? right? And I think that's what the Republicans and the Republicans are working on that too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. cool. And we have had we have had um, already some people indicating interest. Oh. The issue is until we are sure about those districts, they have to reside in those districts. districts. And I have a fellow that would really like to run, and I don't think he's going to be in that district, and he would be a very qualified person. So that's what we're also up against. Yes. Mm -hmm. The boundary lines. Right. Okay. Done? Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Next. Uh, okay. Sorry. I'm a little out of order here. I have change orders. Okay. some informational items while you're signing those change orders. Um, Commissioner Becker will be sworn in for his new term on January 14th. We'll do that before the meeting. Uh, between 8.30 and 8.45, Judge Powers will swear him in and we'll have some refreshments. And then that's the date that the board will reorganize for the new year. So um, with chairmanship and, and those outside boards, that a lot of that will be taken care of on that day. In your packet, I did give you some information from the, the funds the county provided to uh, for the MCCEDC that um, I had given to you before, but I just sent it in the packet this time. So. Will they be flowing back into the general fund? Yeah. Then? Yes, that? because they were paid out of the general fund. Encumbrances in your pocket. Encumbrances. I didn't see that. Yeah. I didn't put it in mine. Basically, that was uh, a lot of that was um, a transfer from an individual owner to a, just dividing their property between the family, and so it's correcting the tax statement.
we do have the lease purchase paperwork for that John Deere loader for the transfer station, and that will be here next week. This will be closed on January 7th, but since you won't be meeting again before that time, um, we're going to take care of the paperwork today. Okay. And Brad, do we need a motion for this just to sign up the paperwork even though they've already approved the lease purchase? I can do it just to be safe so we have it in the minutes. Okay. So um, we'll just need a motion and a vote to accept the lease purchase agreement with Marion National Bank. And um, then there's one signature page that all three of you sign, which is the paper clip page. So I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve the lease purchase agreement with Marion National Bank. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second by Kent, all in favor say aye. 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 Let's see. Oh, even my glasses on, I can read. Seems like it was a, um, I'm off the top, top of my head, I think it was 155. Mm -hmm. Exhibit B instead of spelling it out in the document. That's what it is. Did you sign it? I have We do have encumbrances um, that need to be approved for the 2018 budget, so um, if you want to take one and pass them down. So if you'd like me to, I can go through those with okay, you. So you have a general fund at um, $27,500.35? cents. Yes. Okay, and the health fund is $2,500. Park fund is $86,059.50. Road and bridge encompasses are $12,000. And transfer station recycling fund is $297,002.15. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said we need a motion to approve this. Yes. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the encumbrances for the 2018 budget. Second, 
we had a, a two township clerk positions where persons that were written in declined the position. And typically what we do is we ask the remaining board members to try to find someone that might be interested in serving and um, present those names to the board because those are done by uh, appointment through the Board of County Commission. Mm -hmm. And so we did have, for Logan, um, they have nominated Larry Cushenberry as okay. their appointment, and West Branch, um, Delton both. And so we would need those to be done by uh, motion and vote to, to appoint them. Okay. So. So two, just two townships. Yeah. Um, and so one individually. Part, yeah, I think that's fine. Let me, I'll write it out. Okay. <coughs> okay. So there's the first one. Okay. So the first one is. Um, I would go ahead and make a motion to accept Larry Christianberry as the Logan Township Clerk for Logan Township. Do I have a second? Second by Randy. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yes. yes. Oh. And so also being, I will go ahead and make the motion for West Branch Township Clerk Delton Holtz. Okay. Uh, second by Kent. All in favor say aye. 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 Commission appointments that you need to make today? Uh, I'd like to appoint Kathy and Mo to stay on the board again for another term. Is that a motion? Yeah, I can make that motion. Appoint Kathy and Mo to stay on the same zone for another term. I'll second it. I have a motion by Randy, second by Diane. All in favor say aye. 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 That's going to change too now when you get to the five commissioners. That's going to change the term mm -hmm. how we're going to come up with members there. Yeah. So that will be a fun deal. So we um, have area fuel days. So I guess we can do that next. We do have um, an order here to convey the real estate that you all sold at auction on December 13th. And then I have um, all of the deeds that need to be signed by the chairman. Um, 13 or 15 deeds here. We need a motion for that. Yeah. <laughs> motion then to um, convey a real estate sold at auction pursuant to KSA 79-8-208-F, Marion County Commission. Uh, we'll order the transfer of real estate sold by the county at auction on December 13th. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Randy. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
take time to sign these now. I can do them after the We do need to schedule some time to for you to meet with each department head and go over their reviews. And so I didn't know if you want to do that. Uh, I wanted to ask if you want to do that as a, just an all in one day, as a special day to do that, or if you just want to do that as they are scheduled to come in in the new year. But that might cause an executive session. Um, in the middle of the meeting, so. I just was going to do it in one day and get it done, rather than disrupt a whole bunch of meetings like that, myself. Sounds like, okay, sounds like okay. it's agreed. So, I, or if we just set a time towards the end of a regular meeting and just get stuck them at the end, is that okay? Do that too. That's fine too. Okay. All right. We had a, a serial long average mm -hmm. application that was pending, and we had a, a hiccup with it, and so I don't believe that the county is able to approve that. I see. Okay. Okay. And so the next, do you want to do that? So they would need to contact them or fix whatever? Or just, if I they're imagine. able to do so, the problem with this one is probably going to be a potential for not being able to fix it. History. Okay. So basically, what needs to happen is a denial, a notice of denial. Okay. Is that mm -hmm. a, a notice of denial? Notice. Which is this? Okay, we'll be sending that to them. Okay. Does that have to be voted on here, or is it just a legal action? Well, I think that you probably should vote yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, because you're, we're having you attach your signatures to it, and it is a denial of property right, if you will, in terms of the license to some okay. extent. So I will go ahead and make the motion to deny the cereal malt liquor beverage license to Janice Davis, last chance date. Second. Second by Randy. All in favor say aye. 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 This morning on the table, you do have a resolution in front of you for the um, establishing the two emergency response vehicles for EMS director and emergency management director. And I will comment on that. Uh, until Friday, I didn't get the last phone call <laughs> return to me um, because of the holidays. Um, mm -hmm. And I think everything is in there that's necessary from the IRS perspective. What we're doing is declaring these two positions as public safety officers. The way the bulletin reads, and it's, it dates back from 2010 and forward, there's always been a recommendation to broaden that definition for like emergency management services, but they've never spelled that out as readily as they have with an ambulance director or anyone serving in that particular capacity. But they do say mm -hmm. that if they're, they're responding to emergency types of events on a regular basis, and that's an element of their job description, that they should qualify as a public safety officer. Spelled all of that out in here, also noted that the vehicles need to be appropriately marked, that any personal use would be de minimis in anything in terms of personal use beyond just the occasional, you know, I hadn't run across town 
um, is, uh, is prohibited. It's to be for, obviously, county purposes. Um, but given that they're on call, um, the intent, based upon how the bulletin is written, uh, is that there's a presumption that, that generally they're, they've got that vehicle available to them at all times for that on-call purpose to respond as promptly as possible to do their job. So um, this takes away, simply takes away the requirement to account for the mileage per se and treats it as a fringe benefit, if you will, of the, of the position. And, and do those department heads have to, have to sign off an acknowledgement that they understand? We certainly can have them do so because this sets yes. out yes. those basic standards. Yeah, I would certainly want them to sign an acknowledgement saying they understand what it says. Mm -hmm. Do all the department heads then need to be refreshed on that? They can be. I mean, that's really more just a matter of protocol if you wish to do that. <coughs> Some of these are, are a little more automatic because they've been around for a lot longer in terms of, of uh, Sheriff's Department and those emergency vehicles. There was always that presumption. We broadened that a number of years ago to include the potential for um, certain, you know, fire department positions, uh, fire chief, for example, uh, emergency services uh, director in terms of an ambulance director, um, and they've the comments include. I'd like to see it broadened a little bit more because you do have some of these hybrid positions, and I did check with three or four other counties um, in terms of the emergency management director. They're generally treated the same way. Uh, ironically, I didn't find that they had a. a I was looking for. Um, another resolution to see if someone had something similar just so we knew that it was tried <coughs> through and it had been done and kind of blatantly plagiarize it, but there wasn't one. Um, Harvey County doesn't have one either. I've very Stroud spent a long time looking for me, mm -hmm. which I appreciated and didn't ever find it. They've just been doing it that way. And again, it's, it's implicit. I just am more comfortable with the declaration that, hey, we understand that these, are, these vehicles are going out. We have an expectation as to how they're to be branded. Mm -hmm. We have an expectation as to how they're to be used. And here's why. Um, and set it out as these positions are um, public safety officers, as such the way the IRS puts it, um, and that they, they can hold these vehicles as a, uh, um, a benefit uh, mm -hmm. holding the position because it allows them to do their job more effectively. Okay. Okay. So when you say uh, the minute, minute, so they can stop off coffee shop, yeah. they a cup of coffee, if they would, or if they're all, all day long, they can run to Burger we don't have to work here, wherever, and get a sandwich. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think that probably fits within the, for instance, kind of category. I just don't want it to become, I've got to run a, an errand and I needed something at the right. hardware store in Newton, so I'm going to just take this thing and go because it's the vehicle I have sitting here. Yeah. No. Right. It, it's right. generally to be for mm -hmm. the on-call element of the job. It's mm -hmm. for commuting purposes. That's specified in there. Mm -hmm. And then anything that is truly working. <coughs> If, in the context of doing that, you know, like in Newton, if they stop at, at a Dillon's and grab their groceries on their way home, I, you know, that's the typical de minimis kind of an example. But if you turn it into, well, I'm going to use this thing all the time, then we've got a problem. Okay. So uh, on the way home, because I was just going to mention that, I know I was talking to, I can't remember which, <coughs> and they had said, too, you know, that as long as on their way home, yeah. uh, not that they're running five, ten miles out of their way, but on their way home, if they want to stop and do something, it makes more sense than having them go home and get their own vehicle and come yeah. back and yeah. all that stuff. Okay. And, and if, it's, if it's marginal in terms of any increase in usage of the vehicle, I don't see that as a problem, and that's what that refers to. Okay. And if they really want, you know, massive examples, there are all kinds of commentary in the bulletins with the IRS that we can give everybody to read and <coughs> summarize. But it's kind of a pra you know pragmatic, practical sense approach. Don't be using this thing to drive all over the place. But if you're, you know, going a few blocks out of your way to pick something up on your way home, you know, it's an So the problem still stands that if we come to work at eight o'clock, right over across the street, and at eight thirty we're pulling into Wendy's in Hillsboro, Kansas, as we was this morning, uh, one of our emergency management people. Why? Then that's still administrative. Now we can handle that administrative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a discussion that can be had. Mm -hmm. And this kind of reiterates that in, you, in terms of the last couple of points I specifically didn't want it to become a book, but I wanted this generally to set out what the, uh, the magic language is in the, in the code, and it does. So okay. hopefully we can make that understanding clear yeah. so that it's to be used for. So, so it's 2018-32?
So, I will go ahead and make a motion to approve resolution 2018-32, a resolution of the county of Marion County, establishing <coughs> and confirming certain vehicles provided for the Marion County Ambulance Services Director and the Marion County Emergency Management Director, serving as public safety officers for Marion County. Kansas shall be designated as qualified non-personal use vehicles, qualifying as a work conditional fringe benefit for and in the position held by the identified employees. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kent. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion no carried. Um, I see the sign. And so you said it's easy to get those listings of, of things, right? Yeah, it's, it's, so easy. it's very easy to find them, and, and then they go on for 32 pages. Because I got the IRS, I got the IRS thing, but I didn't see that all that what I had depicted anything like that on that. Topic. When you when you go through them, yes. and they have the different sections, if you go ahead and cross reference those sections, that's where that lawyer thing comes into placement. And I would rather have my teeth scraped than mess with the IRS code. Oh, but that's yeah. what I did with this. It took a while. Um, okay, yeah. And uh, I went back through all of those various sections. 274 is the primary one, but there's also 138 and several others. And then within those, they have the commentary sections. And then they reference those commentary sections in a secondary source. And so I've got about a half inch of paper. Um, but it goes through, and I summarize that here, but they go through examples of what the minimus is. And even what's the adequate marking of the vehicle so that there isn't a question because if you're using an SUV or a car, well, that's, that's more easily used for personal purposes without anybody really knowing. So mm -hmm. they want those things clearly marked so mm -hmm. that you don't have any question about, wait a minute, my tax dollars are supporting that thing. Why is it over here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what about when it comes to accident? It does to a degree because generally what we've done is sanction. Uh, this is a qualified form of limited benefit, and so we're ensuring and that our carrier has a much clearer understanding of the obligation on it when they bid the insurance. Okay, there are certain vehicles that are just like the other uh, police cars. Okay, very good. Okay, and then the last thing I have is the resolution for the five member commission district boundaries. And that was in your packets. Um, there were some highlights on it. Um, and this is a draft, so I'll have to print an original. Yeah, and remove the watermark. But in the, do you need a copy? Um, it was in your packet. But I can't. Oh, yeah, I have my packet right here. I think it was in the packet. It's all right. I can, I'll just make a copy. I need to print you a, a, a final copy without the watermark on it. The question um, that we have was basically, right now we, we, we kept District 3 as the current, in the current area, but I didn't know if you want to renumber to make it, like if you oh, have, I see what you're saying. Just whether you want to switch districts. those and, and then have District 4 be so one, two, three would be four would be three. Right, one, because two, four would be three, three would be four, and then five would stay five. Right. Just to, I didn't know if in the future if that would make it more simple to you know keep track of the districts because you've got one, two, four, three, five. So if you wanted to renumber, then you could do that as part of your resolution. And so that's why I had that highlighted point to see what you want to do. If you want to leave it the same in that way, District 3, 
people. Sure. I mean, it kind of doesn't change. I mean, the boundaries change, but the general areas stay the same. It wouldn't six be, one way. Wouldn't that be confusing? Well, I didn't know which one's more confusing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the new so. districts are going to consider themselves four and five. Yeah. yeah. I don't know geographically why. Well, so what do you think about that since that affects you? I think in the statutes it says it don't make no difference in any way it wants, what the statute says. So if you print it this way, just leave it and go with it. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure on that. I think that's what you were saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't know if we had anything else on these that needed changed. No. Yeah. In terms of, I, I would point out the, the highlighted language mm -hmm. Janet has on it, and it gets to the point that we discussed earlier until the new elected, the newly elected commissioners take office for the new positions so that there's some clarity that remains. That's in the third year. paragraph. Okay. That, therefore, do you see yeah. that? Okay. okay. And that's probably why I didn't know because I didn't, I don't think I, well, I didn't print off the first one. <coughs> I took it off the, the updated one. Yeah. Well, the, the second one. The second one just had the payday things that were missing from the first packet okay. because they weren't available at the time we sent the first packet. And the first small highlight in that very first paragraph deals with the fact that if the governor determined that it was appropriate to have it sooner rather than in November, that's why there's not a specified date there. Right. Because we don't know that that could change. But at this point, I wouldn't necessarily anticipate that. And having it this way, it covers us either way. We yeah, wouldn't have to change the yeah. resolution if we said November and he yeah. said no, we wanted, we're, gonna, we're declaring it in March. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I will. Go print the final version of this one. Okay. If you're ready. Okay. Sorry, that's easy. I see you were looking at that district map. Can you tell me the exact perimeters of Marion North? It will be on, on highway it will be highway fifty six across and I'll have the northern part. Highway fifty six. Yeah. Highway 56 is the dividing line. That's Main Street. Yes, pretty much. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then everything north goes to 6 through 2. And goes how far north? Everything. In north. the city limits. Of, everything of the in city the city limits. limits. <coughs> north, 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 north of Marion is, goes to District 2. And everything south then goes to the District 4. You're not talking old 56 because that's what he said. Yeah, it's old 56. It's old 56. Yeah. Old 56, that's what you're talking about, Henry, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So Main Street. the Freeborn edition is in there, Marion North. Right. Uh -huh. North of the North of Main Street. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I just think that is the weirdest of thing. <laughs> That's the one thing I didn't like. But I mean, I know number wise, we have to do what we have to do. Yeah, but it's just trying to get a balance out of these little clubs. No, I paid the great numbers and that did balance out the best. So, but I thought it didn't look good. Anyway, okay. Okay, this, is, this will be uh, 2018 Okay. So, then I will go ahead and make the motion to approve resolution 2018-33, a resolution establishing Five commission districts for Marion County, Kansas. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Randy. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay. Mr. Jans, do you have anything? Nope, one resolution was it for today. That's it? Okay. Randy, do you have anything at all that you want to talk about? Yeah. Um, I think it was on the <laughs> December was on the 20th. No, it was on the 17th agenda for uh, Christmas bonus. For some reason, you either left it out or overlooked it. It was on the agenda. I don't know what happened. But it never brought to my attention. I see that it was on the agenda, but it wasn't brought. Nothing was said, nothing was handed to us. No amount was mentioned. I it was up. You put it on the agenda for discussion. No, I didn't. I did. Oh. And that's what I say. I'm just wondering why it was bypassed. But anyway, well, for whatever reason, it was not done. Now, can it correct me if I'm wrong? If we was to vote for something like that, now it would not be in the 2018 budget. I mean, it wouldn't come out of the 2018. 2018 expenses if we voted to uh, have a Christmas bonus. Mm -hmm. Doing that today might be a little problematic. Yeah. I mean, you could encumber it yeah. from 2018. You so you could. Yeah. Um. And so in that, though, we're giving them a half a day off today as well. Um, with pay, I assume. I mean, that's where I understand it. Uh, that's the way I understood it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, I just, just wondered uh, if, it, if to, in order to do that, the uh, possibility would be to give our employees a free day of uh, PTO for between to be used in the next six months for Christmas months and not wouldn't affect the payroll, wouldn't affect anything. I had quite a few phone calls why we didn't address it. <clears throat> and I said, well, I think we got busy that day. I know I missed it, overlooked it, even though I put it on there. But uh, my personal opinion is, you know, we gave the employees a Christmas party. Um, we're giving them a, an additional half a day off of pay today. Um, I think that's quite a nice bonus, actually, right there. Especially with the way our budget is and, and the projects that we have to address going forward. Um, I think if I remember right. Bonus with $150, and I think that was about a twelve to fifteen thousand dollar expense expenditure, if I remember right. 20, somewhere now, 20, about twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollar uh, expense. No, yeah. I brought that up. It was, um, and I went back and I did look at it. It was close to twenty-five thousand dollars. Is what that cost us last year. So. so I guess I'd make the motion to go ahead and and. Uh, give the employees a full day of PTO to be used in the next six months for 2018 uh, bonus. I also Unless noticed that we gave two shots to the uh, employees, um, $7,000, that's also a bonus and a benefit. Um, we have the play plan coming up to discuss these things going forward. I mean, back in my day, we got canned ham. Christmas, and that was it. it. And we appreciated it. You shouldn't be talking about your age there. Thanks for reminding me. How many years did we get a cash payment? <coughs> was that just last year? Or no, right? you've know. done it. Uh, it's been done years. for several years. <coughs> I don't know how many years. At least eight or nine, something like that. But then you didn't get the half a day off this, at New Year's Eve. Okay, when we shut down it, and just the, it used to be that the last, the last, I uh, think three years we did. Yeah, shut down it. Yeah, yeah. close it then. Yes. Nothing new. Cash bonus would be a whole lot easier for her to track because now you just put a whole lot more work on her to make sure they take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just yeah. it. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot more bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. So we are where we your are. hidden cost is more than mm -hmm. just doing the oh, yes. typical yes. thing. Mm -hmm. Your typical employee makes twenty two hundred a month. I I'm still working on that. Yeah. I that pay plan and all the research that I've done. Oh. That well, nothing's been done with it yet. So not you yet. Know, you're still talking to that. So yeah. we can allow the hundred and fifty dollar yeah. cash bonuses. So if we would encumber some cash, then it could be paid to them down the road. I mean you wouldn't have to run a special 
payroll. Yes, would we would to have to um, to run that. Yeah, yeah. To run it separately and to to make it go back on the previous year. So the way our system is set up, um, I mean, it's we can do it. It would be pretty. Um, it would be a little bit more difficult. Actually, the the paid time off. It's it's not difficult to add a new code and a new leave code in there um, for that. But either way, it's a process. E either, either way to do that is, is kind of a big process. So. Okay, so there is a motion on the floor. Um, is there a second? Well, I, I, would, I would rescind my motion if there was a deal to go to $150 cash. I have a question. Now, isn't it illegal to do this as far as outside your pay plan to pay? And especially like Randy when he gave himself a bonus last year. Well, and elected that's, officials, and that's criminal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is um, on your pay plan now. And, and he kept the money. I think you ought to get it back. <coughs> so we would have to determine who would get the bonus and who would, because elected officials are not allowed to have it. Am I right? And we made a motion to that effect last year. Yes. Well, we did, you, did, you said, if I remember correctly, was so that not to include the commission, which is correct, but it should not uh, include any elected official. If I'm safe, safe right. That's elected. going to be your safest, yeah. Yeah. In terms of the electeds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it would be. Useful. And that's, that's fine. Yeah. I have no problem with that. I think Randy ought to have to pay his back. Well, it's not just Randy. Mr. Becker did too, yes. and others did too. I mean, it, it's not just Randy. Well, we ought to all do it then. No. I mean, what's good for the geese or goose or whatever? Teresa Huffman did the same thing, misused the public funds, so why aren't we prosecuting these people? Are they above the law or what? Well. Hey. haven't put out appointed people. People that are appointed, are they going to get it? I'll be waiting on mine then. So I don't hear a second, so I'm going to say motion dies for a lack of second. I'll make another motion. Okay. I'd make a motion we give county employees $100 bonus to exclude all elected officials. I'll check that. Got a motion and a second. Go ahead, Tina. Do you want to say something? Uh, it's on. <laughs> Speak up. Yeah. I mean, motion. Okay. <laughs> County employees is very broad. I mean, yes. um, you have people that work that that are that work seasonally, or they may work ten to twenty hours a year, or they may, you know. Um, we, in the past, we have had some guidelines on, you know, how many hours they need to work or how before they would be eligible for that and that they would still have to be actively employed or, I mean, there's a lot of things that go along with it. And just to say, um, I mean, it's, it's a really broad way of doing it and it, it's usually a little more problematic than... Um, we, we set a rule for part-time, didn't we? They had to work in the I'm sorry, I didn't know you were going to be discussing this. I would have, I could have had all of that together for you. But um, yes, I mean, we did set some standards <coughs> years ago as far as what would qualify the employee to receive mm -hmm. the, the bonus. And so um, we would want to make sure that there's some standard there. Well, we could we table that until next week then? allow you a chance to put that together? I think if you guys want to bring it up and discuss it um, at a later time, but I think that the, the motion, just the feedback on the motion in its current okay. format is going to be problematic. Okay, I'll rescind my motion. Okay. okay, so then moving on. The next thing is, does anybody in the audience, I'm going to open up anybody that has any subjects that is not agenda related, which are agendas, please part. I'll give you the opportunity at this time. Mike? Uh, going back to over a year ago, when we purchased the auto house building for the Merriam Ambulance Station, we brought up maybe having an no 
open house dedication. Uh, this past summer, one of the time was all right. There was discussion with our director, maybe quitting, so it was put off. I would just like to bring up if we would still plan to still hold this function. Maybe our new director could have the meet and greet, incorporate that in, and everything that we thought. Even though we're another year later, I guess it's still not too late in my books. Post that as a meet and greet for our new director. Still people to view our new Harry and Hamlet station. And have a little hamburger fry that Granny talked about. Could cook some hamburgers or something at a minimal cost and people see what we did purchase at that point. I think people love this shit. Uh, it's remodeled at this point, I guess, mm -hmm. to where the house is. Yeah. That was another well received, one. I think, throughout the county of a nice facility that we have. Well, that's one thing we, we 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 if the weather gets right and Mr. Farmer gets his feet in there or something, we could do a little Saturday or something, try to host it around there and see what works out in the future if we want to keep playing. I stashed back some hamburgers for that project. Still have it. Needs to be used up. So. Okay. If that works, yeah. something we'll okay. still try to get with our new director and set a date or something. See if we can make that work. I think he'd like that. Public is public too. We'll see what he says. Go from there. Anybody else have anything they'd like to bring up, Miss Ma'am? I'm Patricia Maestrom, and mm -hmm. first I'd like to thank you for your service, and I'd also like to thank you, Diane, for calling. Um, I sent a letter. Uh, asking some questions that I was concerned about last at the last meeting, and uh, I really like to talk to people face to face. Uh, that's much easier, and uh, I don't quite understand why we're pushing for an administrator for the county if the people have already voted against that. If we are, if you are a board elected by the people for the people, why are you pursuing something that we voted against? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're as concerned about the budget as uh, you discuss, um, then how do we pay for this administrator if we're already doing the five districts and having two more commission meeting or commissioners, and uh, also I don't understand if, if we can't be competitive uh, and keep our own employees, uh, how can we justify hiring an administrator who would? Uh, also be of uh, an expense. I appreciate um, that. And I really just wanted to come forward and, and ask these questions. And the reason that I sent the letter here was that I wanted you to have the opportunity to uh, discuss that and to be uh, direct with you instead of just going to the newspaper and saying, why aren't they doing what I said? But uh, I still have that question. <laughs> okay, so I would let our attorney, our, our legal counsel, explain the different options that we as a commission had. And one of the things that went into, um, actually, the actual proposal of hiring an administrator after the vote, because that is something we discussed several times about the type of vote that was made for that um, administrator position <coughs> a year ago. Um, I learned a lot about it myself. Um, as a voter, I didn't understand the difference from an advisory question versus an actual question. I didn't know anything about that, but it was brought to my attention legally that there are actually three different ways that a commission can legally hire um, an administrator. And in some cases, and correct me if I'm saying anything wrong here, That's right. um, and he, sometimes people put things to the vote of people to get their opinions. And um, an advisory vote would be one of those ways, just to get an opinion, not necessarily. Like the five commission, the way the question was worded was not an opinion, it is an actual 
this was an actual a binding question. So was this stated on the ballot that it was an opinion that we were giving? See, because, no, I because your constituents all believed in good faith that mm -hmm. this was a vote of the people. Mm -hmm. Basically, what they're doing is doing this. They did the advisory vote, and now they can vote to do whatever they want because it was an advisory vote. They can still get around that. Basically, what she's saying is. Yeah, the majority of Marion County voted to not do an administrator, but she wants an administrator, and it passed two to one that they're going to hire an administrator. Forgetting about what the people wanted, you know. Yeah, it's an advisory vote; they don't have to go by it. But you know, I came today just to specifically hear her talk about this because at the last meeting they discussed no one. She discussed that no one had talked to her about. It. No one had called her about it except me. I know for a fact that there's been two or three other people that have called her since because I put it on Facebook. They told me what you told them was you would be rescinding that motion. I, I said I heard may. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you I, haven't. I so, said I may. You know, uh, because, and I I'm have just to... like her and everybody else that voted against it, whether it's an advisory vote or not. We voted against that because Marion County can't afford it. My roads crap. Every road I drove on this weekend mm -hmm. is crap. Mm -hmm. You guys have known that. Mm -hmm. Your own engineer, since 1970, worked on the roads himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't get it right. You've been fighting roads since eternity. Mm -hmm. And you're blowing money out the yin-yang mm -hmm. to go do what you guys want to do. You're not paying your existing people enough. Your own salary plan shows that. So you're going to hire more people. And you should do what you told the people you do on the phone. Is rescind that. Rescind that vote. That you when know, I had talked you to you, on. I so. said that I would consider it. Because I do have it listed here to talk about it. I'm just giving you guys the opportunity first. Um, but to answer some of your questions, while you, since you asked the questions, and I did bring this up also at that meeting, because it is true um, when you talk about cost. And like you just said, our roads are a disaster. And that is one of our biggest budgets. And that money is just down the toilet, okay? We spent a gazillion dollars on rock and equipment and salaries and so on. And you got, well, I know most everybody in my district are really torqued at their roads. I know a lot of people in Mr. Becker's district, and there's no secret about that, they're really upset because their roads are horrible. So, and I also put together some information at that meeting that I brought out, but it got lost in the noise and it never was newsworthy. But I also pointed out on some of the things that we've done over this last year, 13, 14, 15 months, that was wasted money, poor decisions. Okay, and one of the things that I said was when we hired the BMG consultants for the new transfer station. And that cost us $30,204 down the toilet because then we just continued his services. Um, and then we hired Jack Capelli, Capelli uh, to do a survey. Do we need a transfer station or do we just want to have outsource all of our trash coming in? That cost us $6,385 down the toilet. Then, of course, this economic development group, the MCCEDC. And even though it's disbanding, the county did put in $185,000 into that venture. And uh, I did attend their last meeting. And they do have expenses that they're going to pay and pay all the cities back and so on and so forth. And we probably will get that money here in the next, I don't know, couple of weeks, maybe. But that comes to closely $37,000 of expenses they still have to pay. So I'm, I'm estimating right now about 148000 coming back to Marion, which means that's $37,000 that we lost on that venture. And then, of course, the pay plan. Now, we, we paid $17,997 for the pay plan. Um, we haven't really got into discussing all the stuff on the pay plan, but what I've read and what I've seen, um, I'm really not too impressed with it. So we're, I don't know. But anyway, I put that down because we did spend the money for it. That comes to about $91,000 down the toilet. So my question to the people is now, would you rather spend that $91,000 for an administrator who can make wiser decisions, or do you want to continue on the same path? 
No, we want we want you guys to make wiser decisions because you three mm -hmm. are the ones that just voted and mm -hmm. spent ninety one thousand right down the toilet. Mm -hmm. We want you to become wiser mm -hmm. and make those decisions. So you ask, so, you tell me. So on the board, and when you when you elect people for the commission, I'm a bookkeeper, and that's why numbers. I, I go by numbers, and of course I'm not born and raised in Marion County. I don't have any connections, no no ties whatsoever. I don't have any friends or family or. I mean, I wasn't born and raised here. And my children are here, okay? So I look at only the facts and the data, okay? Mr. Dawkey is a meter reader, and that's great. I'm a bookkeeper. I don't know what Mr. Becker's retired of, but we're not... We're not retired of. Yeah, are you, are you retired? I said something one time, and I said it wrong, and he kind of bit my head, so I don't want to say what he's retired from. Or if he is retired, I don't even know. But anyway... What I see, and also understand something, it only takes two to pass this. That doesn't mean we all three made these same decisions. See what I'm saying? We have a battle here, two against one, a lot of times. So That's good. Majority rules. You know, that's exactly okay, what happened with the three versus five semesters. Am I in support of that? No. But the majority said that's the way it is. That's okay. the way we deal with it. Okay, so, so if that's if that you know, if you're satisfied with that, the if majority you sit will, there and if the one that was against it sat there and gave their full discussions and reasoning why and they still lost, then so be it. Mm -hmm. That's what you three have to do that you don't do. You guys yeah, don't look at me like that. You three have got to like come what? together <laughs> and whether you agree or not agree, mm -hmm. you can still walk away from this door and you don't have to be belittling each other when you do it. Um, you can agree to disagree. I mean, goodness gracious, that, that's what the whole world is about. That's why we. All, that's why we're here. And but, so I'm not you know, belittling anybody with this. I'm just simply showing you facts and numbers. And this is what I'm answering your question. This is what catches my attention. And so this is why I thought, and this is where I was going from, and this is where the people who voted for the administrator, because I realized it was voted down by 300 and some votes, if I'm not mistaken. So there was a lot of people who were also in favor of it, but anyway, this is what I see. Now, a lot of the people out there don't know all these, and this isn't all of it. This is just some that caught my attention, big numbers. Well, there's a lot of little stuff. And so I, the people don't really, unless you come to these commission meetings regularly, you don't see a lot of this stuff. Even though I video cam it so that the people can watch it in the comfort of their own homes and see exactly what happened. Um, I do know for a fact you can't count on the newspaper to put out the facts and the truth all the time. Uh, so that's why I got the video cam so people can actually see and hear what happened. Get the truth and the facts. But what you're saying is we can pay for an administrator with all that money we just Wasteless, which I'm saying, actually that money's already gone. This so money is gonna, already gone. Exactly. But we don't my have question the money is, do you? But, so. but this isn't isolated to this year. I know that. There's waste every year that an administrator would bring information, research, knowledge, facts, data, resources that we don't have right now. But you know, I, like I said to several people who did call me ultimately, um, I think that for the future benefit of Marion County, we need an administrator. I can see so many advantages to it. I mean, I go, I'm, a, I'm on several, several boards. And the boards and stuff that have administrators, they just flow, okay? And the information, the data that they're given to make decisions on is exactly what we need. Now, this is typically if, what you're going to do. If you're the, making government bigger, you're making the one at the top, you're making the top end huger. No, um, no. Typically, government gets bigger at the top, mm -hmm. and when we want to cut, we want to cut and save money, we cut at the bottom. What we cut? We cut out four road grader people. That's towards the bottom of the pay scale, I guarantee you. So let's cut the bottom loose, add to the top. And that's what you're doing when you add in the administrator. You're adding to the top because there's already two <coughs> school districts superintendents that make over a hundred thousand. You that's think this subject. guy's coming you think this guy's coming to Marion County for less than a hundred thousand? I doubt it. We and don't then know what's that. he bringing with him? We don't know that. See and when we start throwing numbers out there, we haven't even priced the administrator. We haven't even put out for we don't know what that's gonna cost exactly yet until we get into it. 
and research, and maybe we can, what well, maybe we can't, maybe it won't happen. But I'm just I, saying, do we look? We don't know. I would be real happy if I was one of your employees, knowing that you're going to go throw a hundred thousand or seventy-five thousand. What are you paying your new uh, ambulance guy? Sixty-five, sixty-seven thousand. So I can guarantee <coughs> the administrator is going to be somewhere between seventy thousand and a hundred thousand. I'm sitting here as your employee, making twenty-two hundred dollars a month, and you're going to throw a hundred thousand at one administrator. Crazy to me. Well, I'm just I saying I would times. rather have an administrator rather than just money down the toilet yeah. is my I would rather have the administrator than money down the toilet. If, if we spent ninety one thousand dollars and made wise decisions that everybody benefited from or the county goes forward, to me that's well worth ninety one thousand dollars. Ninety one thousand dollars down the toilet got nobody nowhere. And I'm not proud of that. But I would be proud to pay $91,000 to an administrator who can make wise decisions and with this $91,000 maybe write some grants, get some more services in here, um, and provide what the county is lacking. Uh, there's so many things that the administrator do. He would do our budgeting, we wouldn't be paying a lot of that, we wouldn't be paying for somebody to do our, our budget and things like that. The administrator is <coughs> what we've done in-house. I'm just throwing some examples out there. but. If I don't have the support of the commission, then yes, I'm going to rescind my motion. If I don't have the support of the commission to do this, then there's no point in me being the Lone Ranger here. And if the people are happy with the way it's going, then the people are happy. I'm glad you're happy, because that's what we're going to do is make you happy. So if you like the status quo, we can do that. I'm just bringing the facts before the people. We're you just tell us what, what we, Patty, I'm sorry, go ahead. We're not saying um, we're happy with the status quo. Excuse I'm I, 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 I went through this one other, as a newspaper person. We kind of keep moving on or we're going to get stuck just I'm arguing. Sorry. I mean, this is something that I think people can also talk with you guys afterwards. Mm -hmm. well, I and, and a lot of why, things going because, on. Yeah, we're talking about a county of 12,000 people and we got three or four people and so right. I understand. It isn't a private Talking. debate here. Talking right. afterwards right. doesn't seem to do anything. Well, because they don't want us to talk afterwards. I've talked to all of them on the phone. They want us to come here. It's what all three of them have said. Come to the commission meeting. We'll listen to you. Well, they won't yeah, listen to us if we're not on the phone. I've called them on the phone. Apparently, they don't listen to us because well, those two voted to approve it. So, the um, no, I'm, I'm here. Never. I'm telling you, I'm against it. That's all I can do. So, okay. you know, I, I'm not for status quo. I want my roads fixed. I don't need all that stuff. So, you know where I'm coming from. And, okay, okay, I hear you. I'm, I'm here. Did you want to say one more thing? <laughs> I already okay. uh, mentioned it. The newspaper doesn't take I didn't say I did. Okay, thank you. Okay, Henry, I'm going to give you the opportunity. For a number of years, I've lived in the state of California, and we need to be aware of the legislature or elected officials not paying attention to the voters, because they do that in California. And California has turned into chaos. So uh, <coughs> we need our elected people to be responsive to our voters. And I applaud you, Diane, for pointing out the aspects of this administrator thing. But it's been settled. If we want to represent it to the voters, that's fine. Do it before we vote. Because it seems like we made a, a decision that may not have been based on the best information available. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, and let's I, say, I, I applaud you for bringing these points to our attention, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's a little late now. And I, I was, um, of course, I'm, I guess I'm the, I'm the only one in this boat here because I was told by several people that I failed to not educate the public. Um, and so, yeah, the decision, well, the votes were cast based on not knowing a lot of the inside stuff. Everybody failed. We failed because we didn't find out. Right. And, and our media failed because they did not put it in the newspaper where we could read it. Point of order, we, we put multiple so the 
blame Maybe doesn't the fall on one person. Oh, it goes around. Oh, come on. Put me down here in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> are the okay, commissioners going to be making the same amount of money as they are now? That's another thing that they're not thinking about either. Um, it's not going to be raising wages for commissioners because they're going to have smaller districts and they're not going to be paid as much. And also, they're not going to have an MCC director. And our if we got a soup, if we got a um, administrator, um, they could do economic development too, just the same way. And it's going to be there's so many other things that an administrator can do that an MCC director couldn't have. You don't know that they're not going to be paid the same. None of them have stepped up to lower their. To oh, lower I their did. Deal. Yes, they could, I they did. could make a motion that put it to X date, mm -hmm. and that would automatically lower their deal. It takes more than one, as we know, because she's failed on other stuff. But, anyways. Well, I thought mm -hmm. I thought they had talked about that already. Well, well I, I, I have said it many, right. many times that the five commissions should make the same money as the three combined. If we're reducing our workload and reducing our constituents, it's only to me the right thing to do to reduce our salaries. Why would I collect the same money for work I'm not doing? Why would I expect that? I don't think you're going to reduce your workload because I call all three of you. And apparently Kent's the only one I'm supposed to call and I call all three of you. Well, yeah, but a phone call to me is not a workload. I can sit on well, my yeah, couch and I can sit and talk to a whole lot of people. I do it all the time. My workload is when I drive around the county or my district visiting. That's my workload. Yeah. So, yes, sir. It's very discouraging to see this going on. There's a lot wrong with Marion County. Amen? Amen. There's a lot right with Marion County, too. Yes. And we're beating the heck out of things that are going wrong. And we're ignoring completely all the things that are going right. I hear county commissioners and each one is addressing your own constituents. That's who you're focused on. I would encourage the county commission, and I'm going to switch hats. I'm no longer Pastor Roger Charles. I'm the library director of Peabody Township Library now. I'd like to invite the county commission to come and have coffee on a Saturday morning in the basement of Peabody Township Library. We've got an awesome meeting room. I'll provide the coffee. Y'all just come and sit and meet with the constituents of all the county and then move your meeting around and visit all the small towns, yes, Hillsborough and Marion too, but come and visit the people. Get eyeball to eyeball. The way you make the changes is you gotta, you got to understand the big picture and not just one constituent group inside the county. I invite you to come. Leave the ivory tower and come dwell with the peasants for a while. I wish I was in an ivory tower. Yeah, I, I, I would have to ask you to define an ivory tower. <laughs> come, come hang out with us for a while. Rub elbows, get eyeball to eyeball. Listen to us. Listen to our concerns. There's serious concerns going on. Serious concern voices. And I don't call you two. I chew on him because he's mine. There's nothing left but gristle. <laughs> right? Well, but you're fair about it, though. That's, that's a nice thing. But, but the deal is, just come. And don't just come to listen to the negatives. Please come out and seek out what's right. Well, I like to think if it's not broke, don't fix it. So things that are right are right. And I love that. But There's we need spotlights on it. Because right now, where's your spotlight? I would hope that the newspaper would spotlight a lot of really good stuff. And they do. But we they need do. you guys to do it too. Come spot, put a spotlight on it. Okay, anybody else have anything else they want to add to the audience? No, but well, I agree. The, there, the there's, is. there's a whole lot more good about this county so, than there is bad. Thank you. A lot of us live here because we want to. I could live anywhere in the country I want, but I live in Marion, Kansas. Where I'm going to stay. We've got to take more pride in our county. 
And you guys, there's been differences of opinion here today. Everybody was civil. When we get together and discuss our problems, we can find a solution. Okay, thank you, Henry. Yes, Mike, one more time. To add to Reverend Charles, the private committees in the Peabody community, there's at least, what, five or six pretty major ones that even there's the pride they take in taking care of them deals within the city or the community is very awesome. And it's what, I mean, I've experienced it and can only commend everybody's time and effort that goes into that committee and I've seen it. And it is very positive for a very declining community with a lot of issues, but that volunteer effort that goes into what was, I think Anna talked about, $5,000 just to keep the lights fixed or something, and then they got somebody to do a little cheaper $3,500, but just to have the Christmas lights in the city of Peabody, I think it's probably a private donation, and they're struggling to come up with that money every year, but we don't even have enough electrician contractors probably within the city of Peabody that to do it, can do it totally as a donation or something. So it's sad to see something as simple as, as the Christmas lights could go away at some point, yet they're a community that has struggled to keep them on. And you got to applaud the entire community for the efforts, and a lot of it's done through about five or six community volunteer groups, and it's amazing to see that. It's the and commitment they have. You're saying exactly what I said, just in a different way. You know, we are struggling in some of our community things for money, and uh, there's a lot of grant money out there to help not only about Christmas lights, but on the boards that I was on, some of the grant money that's available to help provide services um, and things like that is amazing, but you gotta get out there and find it. But it's out there. There's so much money out there to help on some of the basic and simple things for the community to make life and, uh, a better place to live. So, but we don't have anybody at the county level at this time to do that. So. But for the city of Peabody to have a little carnival on the 4th of July and we can't have one at our county fair speaks all the volumes. Well, you could say the same thing, though, for county. Ramona. They do a wonderful thing on 4th of July as well. So, I mean, all your communities are doing yeah. things. Tampa does so, a lot, yeah. too, and as small as they are, yeah. they really try. They do. They do. Yeah, so, I mean, things. that's county-wide. Yes. I think some of us forget sometimes that you guys pay taxes, too. Or that we're even human. Huh? I think they forget we're even human sometimes. Well, so, but at any rate. We'll try to remember. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to close the floor then. Does anybody else have anything else to say? Okay. So then we'll move on. So did you have anything you want to say, Mr. Dawkey? Looking for a bigger and better year. Okay. Mr. Becker. You just need to keep listening to our constituents and the people in this county and trying to do what's right. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple things that I did put on the agenda that's the wrap up right there that I wanted to talk about. Um, going into the next year, I noticed on our warrants we paid the connecting links and I think Roger Holster came before us here a couple of months back presenting how very far out of balance we are on that. And when I looked at the crumbs that we paid to our connecting links, I think that is something that we really need to take a good look at next year if we can't maybe come up to closer to where we should be in helping our cities, uh, big and small, for the connecting links as far as our party is concerned. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the MCP EDC. <coughs> um, I was really, and I know I could, it's, shutting the doors and it's now a thing of the past and I don't want to beat the horse to death or anything like that. But um, I, I did uh, put in a core request for some documents. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Seibel is probably going to bring the documents to you on Wednesday or something. I don't know. It's not sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay, but that's where they would come ultimately to you, am I correct? Or would they, they go someplace else? Do you know? I have not heard anything about it, so I, I don't know. So you're not really expecting them? This know. is the first I heard. <coughs> okay. So, I mean, it's possible that they'll bring documents. I, I don't know. But if you've made a request, then usually they would follow up and tell you when they'd be ready and how. Okay. Well, I was just wondering, uh, with it being closed, where would you anticipate their 
financial documents to go. Um, I, didn't you say that their assets and their physical stuff is coming back to the county? Isn't that what the vote was? What number? Yes, all their, yeah, so that is correct. Was that not on the values and things, our board, statutes and things that they, they passed? Well, I think they made a vote that the, their tangible items would come back to the county. Right. So you are they? Do they get to keep all? Are you documents? asking me if anybody has been in contact with me from MCC? No, no. I'm just as as a board. What would we oh. expect to happen, Mr. Um, Jan? Probably my there you go. So this is a board now that has decided to 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 uh, disband. Expand. Okay. So all their financial documents, like their bank statements and so on and so forth, where would you expect that to go at this time? Generally, because they were they were a little bit unique, so it's not as clear cut as it often is. But I would still cutting to the chase, expect those to come back to the county in terms of a repository of any of that for future reference okay. for housing. Yeah. Okay, that, that was my question. Because there's really no other alternative. We okay. don't have any other place to go. Would the, would the board best make a motion to It probably would be. If they didn't really do that, I, don't, I haven't looked at any of their paperwork, so I don't know either. But if they haven't, it would probably be a good thing for them to do it in terms of the winding up of business, then any remaining records, anything else that relates to them that's tangible or otherwise. Um, be directed back to, and then they specify. Well, and they're, they are closed up as of December 31st, which is today, so I wonder if that would maybe be appropriate for the attorney to contact mm -hmm. them and say, yeah, it we like would it like would that information to come back here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you'll have to call Clint Seidel personally, because um, <coughs> I put in a CORA request from Catherine for bank statements and um, her mileage statements, okay, because she was getting a lot of money for mileage and nothing. And I was absolutely amazed at what I got as far as the bank statements. I got page one of page two. I didn't get the whole bank statement. And I paid for this. I paid five dollars for her time. And then I also paid for the, the document printing. Um, as far as her mileage is concerned, um, this is the only thing that she provides. My reason for bringing it up to the board is I paid for documents that I didn't get, so I was wanting to know when we get those records, I would like to see if I could get my money, get my money's worth that I paid for. Because I would like to see, I did call Catherine at one point in time, and I said I'd like page two or page one of, of the two, because this is a two, well, this has the little tiny checks. And I asked her, she said, yes, but you don't need those. Yeah, I want those, because that's part of the bank statement. So, um, I was just wanting to know what the process was because now the phone's been cut off. You can't call her. You go to the office for the last two days. She's not there. I made arrangements to have her picked up on Friday, and she's not there. So I can't get the rest of my documents that I have paid for, and I would like to have those. And I thought if they're going to come to you, um, I just wanted to know what the procedure would be then for me to get the rest of those okay. documents. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we don't know yet. Right, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, once it comes back to us, then it would be a motion by the commission for the, to look at them or something like that. Or you could just simply yeah. review them. You can all review them yeah. as a board. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as a board, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Okay, that's yeah. good. I'd like to I mean, if whatever yeah. we get back. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. This, I would tell you, though, as far as I'm concerned, this has been a real struggle. This is typical of the way they've been operating, and that was my big beef from six, eight months ago, saying that this board needs to disband because you just, you, I, you can pull teeth easier than get the simplest information from them. It's sad. But anyway. So. I, I did hear from um, one of the members, I believe on Friday, and of the committee, and they said that they would be bringing some of the final disbursement and talking through some things um, next week sometime. And so I at least have had contact with them. I don't know anything about your records request or what we're, we'll be getting back. Um, so maybe some of that can be learned next week. But if okay. Brad makes the phone call today yeah, to reach out and say we expect that all the records would come back, um, okay. you know, that would probably help. Okay. 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 So I just want to and then once once I have things, whatever I get back back, I'll I'll be sure and report to you all so you're aware of what we have. And I'd appreciate okay. that. Yes. Does that and help? That's what I wanted to hear. Okay. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome.
Okay, so then one final thing I did want to talk about, well, I'm going to say two things actually, because there was questions brought up. Um, so when it comes to the five member board and our salaries, so I'm going to ask the commission right now, when we go into the five member board and when they see it, do you feel as though you should retain your same salary, Mr. Becker? I think I've made the statement in the past is that in order to have incentive, you've got to have some incentive for people to run for this office. It, it involves a lot of time, lots of mileage that isn't reimbursed, lots of phone time, and that's my position, is that there has to be an incentive for people to run for this position just because of the amount of time that it takes and due diligence and everything else that goes with it. And that's where I stand. So is that a yes, that you're not willing to change, uh, lower your um, salary at all? Your incentive is the current salary. I haven't, I haven't stated that I would expect it to be the same. I'm, I'm not saying it can't be reduced. I'm not saying, because I, I haven't really made a final determination, but you still, you have to, I still believe you have to have incentive. I understand that. I'm saying, do you think that your incentive should be the full salary that you're receiving now? That's I said I'm question. not in that position to make that determination yet. Okay. Mr. Be Mr. Dawkins? I, I understand what Kent said, and I wholeheartedly agree with that because you, you do want some people that's worthwhile to run for these positions, that's uh, to listen to the public and do your due diligence, like you said, your time driving and all that kind of stuff, just to see your area, let alone see other people's areas too, see what's going on in the other areas. Uh, because, you know, we are county commissioners, we're not just, our, we represent our district, but we also are part of Marion County, so, so that's why it should be, we see everything in our county. Uh, also, the one thing that went through this deal is that I'd like to accomplish going into the five county commissioners is that we all receive one pay, whether we receive insurance or not. And, and that's, uh, you know, I think that can be accomplished. Uh, maybe that creates a legal problem that if, if we get so much money that we pay it out of our, our pay, our insurance, and not the county. You know, the county, right now the county pays extra on top of for insurance on top of our salaries. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so what I'm saying is I'd like to see that somehow the county commissioners <coughs> get the next straight across the board salary. And if I choose to use insurance out of it, then I choose to buy insurance out of it. But I, I don't receive anything extra. The only thing that I know of that would be extra would be capers, and the county pays for that for capers. That's going to be the only thing. So. Um, Okay, so you're saying then we would pay the full amount of insurance? The no, 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 no. I'm saying we'd set one salary, and if you want the insurance out of it, you could pay for your insurance out of that salary. If Kent wants insurance out of that, he can pay for his salary. So the simplest way to accomplish that, I think you're saying the same thing, is that um, instead of the county contributing towards that for commission, yes. that the commissioner could still be on the county plan, but they would yes. pay the full amount. Yes, of yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what I just yeah. said. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 You just were not saying yeah. it the same way. Okay. So, okay. Mm -hmm. if, so if, if, if we wanted it, we could pay for it ourselves out of our pay. Yeah. I, I have no problem with that. So, no, uh, the question that I asked you, though, was a reduced salary. So, you're saying, you know, I'm not talking about benefits right now. Well, I, wait a minute. That's part of our salary. Benefits is part of it. So, that's what I'm saying. And I agree with Ken 100% that we want to some way pay for the people's time and things that they put into this job. We've had some people on here that never put any time on it. We still do sometimes. And so. Mm -hmm. So, and I, uh, so I'm going to make my position very clear since I, I gave both of you yours. I totally believe that we need to take a price reduction. I understand traveling around, Lord knows I put more miles on my than I do not ask the county to reimburse me for one mile. Um, I realize going into this position, I look at it as more as a service to our community. And I don't know that money is what makes a better person to be a commissioner. I think it is the way you view the county, and I view it as a service. So I do not ask for mileage re reimbursements, and I'm on the road constantly. And I study and research and go to all the trainings, and I'm on boards and all this type of stuff. I enjoy it. I make mistakes. But I try, and I try my best to learn. And that's why I go to all the trainings and things like that so I don't make mistakes. 
and I'm not saying I'll ever learn not to make mistakes, but I'm just saying I do try. So it is my position, as far as the insurance is concerned, I will tell you right now, I plan that when the renewal comes, not to participate in the county insurance anyway. I plan to just not be a part of um, Because there seems to be confusion as to whether we are elected officials or county employees, and so um, I will just make my, my point to where I will seek my insurance elsewhere. And so, and that's fine. But um, I just think we should take a, a reduction and be servants. And I really don't think the money is what makes a good servant. I <clears throat> do not have an opinion. I have a question for information. As you stated, that this could be some incentive for new candidates to know they will be paid. So do you, can you say at this point what would be the salary for any new commissioners? Or will that yet to be determined? Because that might help somebody say, well, maybe that would be an incentive. So do you know at this point, or is that yet to be determined, what the two new ones? Well, Mr. Becker just said he's not at the position to make a determination yet. So, so we so don't know what to tell them? We don't know. OK. Ma'am? I don't see there being less work for any of you. I still see that you all will be uh, doing uh, hopefully it will be done better because it will be spread out, but and I don't expect anyone to take a cut. Um, that's one person's opinion. Mm -hmm. so, and I hear it all the time to where we should take cuts. <laughs> So, I'm okay with it. It's yeah. public information that we could tell people, potential people, what the current salary is now for the three of you annually, but that has yet to be totally sorted out, mm -hmm. right? So, I think Eileen's got a very good point. I mean, the people that are going to run it, they're still going to be saying, Okay, what does it take? Right. I mean, okay. I mean, they may have public service at heart, sure. but <laughs> they still maybe don't have the uh, resources to do everything they need to. Um, and, yeah, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to eliminate yeah. any, anyone yeah. from considering well, that position. Well, that's that's right, uh, and I bet I will be asked that question. So you, think, you so you yeah. think that if if you offer, if you tell them that currently you're making eighteen thousand a year, but the new people are going to make fifteen thousand or whatever that that would cut somebody out. It could. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Three thousand dollars is a lot of money to some people. It can't. Yeah. Maybe one. <laughs> okay. So. so so would we be allowed to state that exactly currently right. it is is the I think it'd be better if we didn't say that yet because we really don't know. I mean, but no, I you can tell them what it is currently. That's what I, I was asking. That. But that it has been discussed to possibly uh, change that. Right now, that sure. eighteen thousand plus, if you take insurance, that's another five or six thousand. So you're looking at twenty-three thousand. So the insurance is paid on top of yes. that yes. at this account. point. Yes. Mm -hmm. And your capers. How much is yes, sure. Okay. Well, I will always state it that it's yep. just current and not on. Uh, not determined for future. Right. Is the caper is six percent of our salary? Is that That's your portion. The county pays our portion. A the different county rate. Pays. It changes every year. I don't know that off the top of my head anymore because I don't do the I don't have to look it up. Okay, so then I have just one more thing, and that is I do want to ask the commission also because my my point here is where do we go from here? Um, you know, we've done a lot of discussing about different things, and it seems as though we really haven't finalized anything other than the fact that the people did vote together for five member board. So the administrator. Um, Mr. Becker, I'm going to tell you, ask you at first, I mean, I thought you were in favor of hiring an administrator. Um, I did, and I did, I, I went around the county. I didn't spend a lot of time in Mr. Dalkey's area, but I did spend some time talking to people in that area about the administrator, um, and I make my position very clear. You know where I stand. Um, but Mr. Becker, I don't know where you stand, and so my question to you now is the last, 
word I heard from you was in March. You wanted to do something. So, um, are you still of that mind, or have you changed your mind, or where I, do you uh, stand? I don't think I said something. I said we would move ahead with looking at what at at, a, at that position. So I'm still in favor of that. Okay, so you're still in favor of hiring an administrator. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Dalkey, uh, you voted no from the start. Well, I, I think the public spoke. I believe in, in this administrator deal is we can listen to the public and uh, do this. I think I don't see that there's anything wrong with after two to three more years and you've got this new five commission member. If they vote for it and they decide to take it to the public again, maybe that's maybe that's when we do and we, we take it to the public and say then. I mean, I think, I think that's all in time to come, but I think you exceeded your meets and bounds by jumping into it within one year after taking the vote. I think three to two to three, maybe four years down the road, then we we take a look at it again. I'm not going to say that it's that it's not possible then, but it's uh, still again, you're making a big change in the county, and and if all five commissioners come out and said yes, this is what we want, and this is what we need, this is the reason why is some of the things you've explained that you voted for, and they did in South too, so. You're right along with us. So, uh, and then sometimes when people vote for things and say things and they turn their back and actually just disgrace some people, volunteers, well, that, that runs things down. And, and that played a lot in the Marion County economic development by running things down. And because they're volunteers trying to do a job, good people. So I say that in four, five year, four, four years or so, maybe the administrator could come up. I'm, I'm still. Not right now, with five commissioners, the expense we've had and stuff like that we're going to have. And I think it's just time that we slow down a little bit, take a look here. So that's, I guess that's my opinion. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry, so in, you're saying in March you still want to visit it? Yes. That was, that was I mean, we haven't done anything other than saying we, we would Correct. support it or not. I mean, we haven't looked at the position. Uh, responsibilities, what would, what would we actually expect out of an administrator, those kind of things. I mean, we have to walk through that. Now, that was part of my motion at the time I made the motion, how we would implement that by hiring the national uh, agency to do all that for us. Because I am, one of my big things on the administrator is um, to hire a completely unbiased person outside of Marion County somebody who has no access to grind or no biases towards Marion County, just somebody with a professional background to come in. Um, I don't think we're on the same page there. No, because we have we have quite a bit of expertise just in Hillsborough and Marion. Okay, so that's what I wanted to know. Okay, so having said that, at this time I will rescind my um, motion if I can. We're still in a meeting, right? Yeah, I don't believe you can okay. send a motion once you've voted. You can make a motion to reverse yes. your previous decision. Okay, so that's what I will do. Mm -hmm. I will make a motion to reverse my previous decision to hire an administrator to seek and fill a position of administrator for Marion County based on the fact that I do not feel like I have the support of the commission to do that. Well, find a motion to me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even so you didn't have a motion. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Okay, so the, uh, okay. Uh, that's not today's meeting. But you guys voted, so you yeah. don't have a mo an don't open have a motion, motion on the floor. floor. So what she, if, if we restate your motion, which I don't know if I got it all down on the exact, um, you made a motion just now to reverse the decision to seek and fill that administrator position. Yes. Due to um, not having lack of support of the commission. Yes. So you you follow where I'm going now, and I'm still right on board. Okay, okay. Now, so I reverse my decision. So, do I have a second? I think today you just, you're just you just making a motion not to further go ahead with the ministry. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's simply what you're doing. Basically, yes. That's okay. the third grade version. <laughs> I've heard that stated before. So, do I have a second? I will second it. Second by Randy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Becker was opposed. Do we have anything else to discuss at this commission? 
in that, I would entertain a motion to <coughs> adjourn. Do I have a second on that? Sure. Oh, so you made the motion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry. You said I would entertain a motion. But okay. nobody made a motion, and then you said second. So are you making a motion? I made a motion. Okay, thank yes. you. And he seconded it. Okay. All those aye. Aye. So anxious to end the year.